just did my video on spin casting made easy and kind of explained how the easiest methods for picking up trout bass and um, how to basically use your spin caster and what you should be going for early on in your levels just to kind of conserve yourself some money so today what I thought I would go over is rods reels and slack which is something I promised to explain in the last video I didn't have time I was in a little bit of a hurry and had a few kids running around so we're gonna go into depth into that this time and how to keep that fish from jumping off your hook because it rushed the shore at you so first of all we're gonna start off with the Aurora 8 foot 2 inch so this is one of my favorites um, there's a pack that you can buy for the Aurora sports pack it's $10. If you're early on in levels, it's a fantastic rod reel. You can actually take that same rod reel all the way up through Emerald Lake and use it to catch walleye. I have myself. Um, the Aurora 8 foot 2 inch. Let's see here. In rods, this is going to be a casting rod. And we're going to go in, and that's going to be right about... Is it a bay casting rod? I apologize. I think I was wrong on that. That is a spinning rod. My apologies. My apologies. Sorry. Still early. The Aurora 8 foot 2 inch is a level 14 purchase at $4,450. Okay. Now, the difference is, is this has got a heavier lure weight. You can go from 3 eighths to 3 quarters ounce lure on this one. It also has a 3 to 10 pound line weight. The action is still extremely fast on this with only a two piece with 10 guides. Now, okay, why do the guides matter? The guides are going to give you more or less flex along the pole. And we'll explain more about why that's important here. And how to keep that slack from from taking your fish from you so first let's get right into how to put this together so we have the aurora eight foot two inch but what reel do we put on it well here's the thing you want something that matches the line weight of your pole that's probably the most important portion of this because your line weight's going to determine how big the fish that you're going to be catching are so we looking at and i know this is is a terrible view of these um the way that they they just kind of put all the information together but if you look at the very end of the explanation on each reel it'll tell you where the drag is the 6.5 pounds 11 pounds five pounds this is your guide for what weight of line that you're going to be putting on these reels this also is your guide as to what kind of line is going to be best for it because if you back up just one more section there, you get a, oh, <laughs> let me go to, there we go, back over here, <laughs> you get into the 12 100s, so you get 12 100s. 21 35th, um, you get 12 100, 21 135th, um, and, and what these are is the amount of line that you can put on for that type of line for how big your spool is around and how many wraps you're going to get of that for how many feet you're going to get out there. Now, that can be a little bit confusing. <laughs> So you may have to play with it a little bit, excuse me, <clears throat> again, early, still trying to wake up, coffee. Um, a fantastic rod reel combination is the um, Espera MLR 3000 with the Aurora 8 foot 2 inch. Now the drag is a little heavier on this reel and it's only a 4.7 to 1 ratio. Whoa, ratio, what are we talking about here? Okay. 4.71 means that every time I turn the crank one time, the spool spins 4.7 times. Okay? Makes sense. It's making 4.7 rotations for every one crank, which is saving you work. If you had a one-to-one -one ratio, every time you turn that handle, it would only go around once. That would be a lot of work for reeling in a fish for 100, 120 feet. Okay? 
you'd be sitting there forever trying to do this. Doesn't matter how high your real speed is. But if you get something that's a 4.7, 5.4, you're looking at a mid-range reel here. So what I mean by mid-range is you could go a little bit slower and you could have fewer rotations per turn. Now this is better for your jigging, for your, um, your crank baits, things like that, where you want a heavier reel with more power that doesn't reel in quite as fast as quickly so that your lure isn't just jumping back out of the water you're getting down you're getting you know where the fish are things like that you're using your crankbaits uh, and sometimes diving crankbaits um, but you're keeping your lure in the water longer with your sp your your um, spinners and um, some of your top water, you're going to want something a little quicker that just kind of zips it through the water because the idea is, is you're supposed to look like a small insect or a fish zipping by, which is what's going to entice the fish to come out after you. So mid-range to faster reels for that kind of stuff is absolutely fantastic. Um, but I definitely recommend like the Aspera ML um, R3000. Good morning, Paladin. And we're going to equip that right here. Um, now, again, we have a ratio of three eighths to three quarter ounce lure weight. Okay. And we can put up to 11 pound max drag on this. So, our line. What line do we use? Okay, well, again, I told you, you kind of want to stay between whatever the maximum for the rod is and you absolutely do not want to go over the top of the reel so let's say that instead of using the aspera we were using the crucian hunter okay now the crucian hunter only has a 6.5 pound um max drag all right so that means we can't use over six pound line on this you could but you'd really be damaging your rod and reel and why would you want to do that kind of stuff you know, so you wouldn't use anything over like say a mono number nine. Um, there's some braids, but really you're if you're if you're staying that low, you really kind of want to go either mono or fluoro. Um, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and put the um, oh <laughs> well, apparently I already did. Yeah, the yeah, Aspera ML three. All right, so since that has an 11 pound max drag and the, the rod has a 10 pound max line weight, what we're going to do is we're going to stay right within 10 pounds. So let's look and see what I've got here. I've got quite a bit of line. <laughs> um, there we go, fluoro number 11. So this is a fantastic one. It's 10 pound line and you're going to stay right within. Now we could go down to an eight, which would be fine too. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this one on. I'm well aware that it is half dead. That's fine. It's not gonna matter for what we're doing. And really I will run a line into the ground before I get rid of it and change it out just because cost effective. And with fluoro, remember a lot of times you're spending coins, not cash. And those are worth a lot more. So you want to get as many fish out of that line as possible. Okay. So, again, we can go three-eighths to three-quarters. That's a bit bigger range than if you're looking at, say, the Featherlight 7000, which is a one-sixteenth to two-fifth ounce. You can't even go up to a half ounce with this one. Now, on that, I have a 9.9 .9 pound max drag, but I'm only using braid number seven on this, an eight pound line. See how I stayed underneath that maximum. And that's just to keep you from damaging your rod and reel. It's not like you can't put that line on, but you're going to get more line. I have 637 feet of line on this reel. I can cast it as far as I want. As long as I have the ability, strength, and weight at the end of it. So if I'm using the heavier end of two-fifths ounce, you know, 
All right, so let's get back to this real quick, and we're going to go over here. Um, a quarter ounce is pretty much the 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 highest you're going to be able to go unless you can actually find. Um, or I'm sorry, I take that back. A half ounce, not quarter. God, unless you can actually find a three quarters ounce lure, which you can get a little more specific in your jigging, and this pull does fantastic for jigging. Um, I recommend if you're going to do a lot of jigging, don't go with the higher ratio um, reels. Go with the lower ratio. This is why I've got a 4.7 on this is because I can just immediately turn this into a jig rod. And again, what's the difference between a jig rod and a spinner rod? Okay, well, with jigs, you're keeping it at the bottom. You're using a lift and drop a lot more often. You notice that these are all three quarters ounce. These work fantastically. Um, we're going to put, though, let's go on down here. Wow, I don't have one. Hmm. Excuse me a second. Now, obviously, if you equip the, like, 1 16th ounce real quick, terminal tackle is too light for the rod. The cast will be short. That doesn't mean you can't use it. You can cast with that, but you're not going to get as much distance out of it. So don't expect, you know, it to go way across the lake with, with something that's too light. Also, your retrieval speed is going to be a little quicker. So you need to be aware of that. Make sure and keep your... your, your um, retrieval turn down to, to minimum and um, maybe even just use a stop go method uh, for lighter tackle it'll still work but if you're going to go all the way out well that was the that was the lure I was looking for right there well let's unequip that and we're going to put it on this one here Oh, this is home. That's why I can't find my stuff. Because I'm a fool. I'm in the wrong bags. There we go. There we go. There is my narrow spoon half ounce. There is all of my... Yeah, I have quite a few lures. Um, now, you're not going to be able to use your bullet spinners with this one. Because they are going to be too heavy. Now... You have the opposite problem with heavy lures. Heavy lures can actually damage your line, as well as your rod and reel. The reason why is because of the amount of force being generated on that equipment, just trying to pull that heavier lure through the water. And so you get more drag, and you get less action out of it. So heavier is definitely bad, but light is okay. As long as you're expecting that you're going to be a little bit quicker with your your retrievals and stuff. Now I have an excellent three-quarter right here. Rainbow. Um, and it seems like I have more uh, half out than I do three-quarters. So you have like my X-Series barbless and things like that. So... Um, that is your rods reels explained as to why you're you're pairing what with what you're really looking at your line ratio but in that decide what you're going to do with that fishing pole okay i have fishing poles for doing different things all the way across the board here i have a heavy thora with the five seven to one and uh to a one and three quarters ounce lure weight whose line weight is 6 to 21 pounds. The reel on this is 24.2 pounds with a 5.1 ratio. It's a little bit fast, but it was within my, my purchase price. And it still works great for my crankbaits and stuff. It's a little bit heavier. I'm using a 16 mono on that. Why? Because I'm not trying to cast it real far. I'm just trying to get some depth out of that and see if I can yank some fish out of there. Um... Obviously, you have your, your float gear. Um, here we go. A 1 16th to 2 fifths ounce. Obviously, this is my lighter pole. I'm using this for just kind of zipping across and, and, and whipping spinners through there. 
Um, I really like to whip spinners through there. <laughs> I have several different ones. This is my Elemental 6 foot 7 inch. I just can't bring myself to get rid of it because it was my first spinning rod. My first successful spinning rod. Uh, and I have a Prima 2000 on that, which is 5.2 to 1. Absolutely fantastic spinning reel um, with a braid number 7 on that. And I can catch just about everything all the way up to Emerald Lake on that that is bass, trout, or pickerel. Anything that likes to likes to snag a, a spinner going by, absolutely fantastic. So, let's go ahead and get into the lake. First, we're gonna go right over here to this, then we're gonna do this, and we're gonna go to Rocky Lake again. Ah. All right, so I think we're gonna we're gonna fish from here. Um, we are going to go to a private room because you know no players. We're gonna head go in. Now I'm gonna do something that you don't normally see me do, and that is I am going to fast forward time to a little bit better time zone. Oh, hold on, if I can remember how. Uh, there we go. Square button on the controller. Um, we're going to go right here to the beginning of... Excuse my grabbing here trying to adjust my headset just a little bit um, we're gonna go ahead and go forward right here to 5 p.m. and now what should I have my my drag set to you'll notice that your drag here we go right here your drag in bottom right hand corner of my screen you can see me increase decrease this now what this is going to do is this is going to dictate how much line it lets back out um, now, this is very important with how much slack you're giving the fish to run with. Um, I like to keep mine relatively high. Here's the thing. When testing a new rod or reel, don't bring it beyond half because you don't know what your setup is going to bring you. You don't just want to snap your line lose your lures. Those lures can be hard to get, especially some of the more um, elite ones and ones that you have to earn through missions. We're going to go ahead and cast out. Now what's funny is with the console, you can't adjust this down here for your real speed until you're in the water. I just tried. Weird, right? I can do it on the computer, no problem. I get a little mouse wheel that rolls up and down. Okay. Just a side note. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and reel. Straight slow. Okay. Now that three quarters ounce is not getting very far. There it goes. There it goes. Now it's up off the ground. Now with spinning, yeah, you want to keep it low, but you don't want it dragging the ground. This seems like a really good combination here because I'm not actually on the ground, but I am deep and I'm staying low. It's not retrieving too fast. It's not so slow that it's just dragging through all the weeds and crap on the bottom. But at the same time, the closer we get, the higher we come to the surface. And it's not until we get within, let's see here, oh, there we go, 23 feet, that I finally snag some... some plant life here we really need to catch something so let me see what I can do um, where's my X series unless that went into my home and also this pole is fantastic 
just on a side note for top water um, you'll notice that my frogs are all half ounce five eighths um, and and so are my jigs and this pole setup is fantastic for all that you can take this over to the Louisiana and just fish all day with top water uh, weedless lures those frogs are fantastic for it let's see here though um, it looks like I left my X series at home fantastic for me right Okay, well then what we're going to do is we're going to change rods. Uh, let's go to the Featherlight 7. Because we know this one really well. We already know how it works. But I'm not going to use this particular lure. We're going to move to, say, a 1 8 because I'm looking for something a little bigger. Remember, the bigger the lure, the bigger the hook, the bigger the fish. You want smaller fish, use a smaller smaller hook. Now, that doesn't mean the bigger fish won't hit it. It just means you're more likely to catch the smaller ones that'll go, ooh, and grab it as it goes by. The, the bigger hooks, the smaller fish are going to see that and go, mm, I can't fit that in my mouth. But the bigger fish will still go, ooh. It's just fewer and farther between. So you get fewer hits, but you're getting bigger fish. So let's go ahead and let this sink out over here. We're just going to use my little stop and go method here. Because you'll notice that the ratio on this one makes it so that this lighter lure comes right to the surface. Which is what I recommended on our last video that I was explaining. There's a reason for this because in the wild, prey will try to go to the surface. A lot of the small bugs and things that live in the water or fall into the water are going to be trying to get back to the surface they're not going to be trying to just swim around down below enticing fish and so if they look more natural like they're doing what they should be doing fish are more likely to hit them the same rules apply here in this game Give us just a few minutes here. We're going to see if we can hook something nice and juicy. And I have my uh, my drag turned down at the moment. Now, why did I do that? I'm pulling a little bit with the line itself and just getting a little more action out of the lure. I mean, you wouldn't just kind of stand there static if you were out there actually fishing. You'd be moving around and pulling your rod and, and, and you know, jerking that bait around trying to get him to get him to hit that. Now, this lure should be doing a lot better just because it's a cloudy day. And that tiger yellow usually gets them going pretty good out here. So I'm not quite sure what's going on at the minute. I have noticed some strange discrepancies between the console and PC versions of this. Um, especially with the way that the fish themselves react. I get a lot more action on the PC for my builds than I do on the console. And I think part of the reason of that is is the lack of lag, believe it or not. The servers are more stable on PC. And so it doesn't glitch out and the fish can't swim towards the lure and take a chunk out of it. Oh, there we go. We just hit that log. Let that sink. And so I end up with a lot more small fish catches 
but I also end up with some really nice big fish catches on there too. Yeah, he took off with it, and then he didn't decided he didn't want it. And again, you're not going to get. Oh, there we go. Well, I was hoping to. I didn't mean to just whip him out of there. There's trophy golden Colorado golden trout, um, but he's only 1.8 pounds, and that's still a little light for what we're doing. So here, let me turn my drag down a little bit more. Oh, see, yeah, up, down button. I can't adjust that, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and try this again. Let the line out. Bring that back up. Bring this up here. Almost to the surface, and no. Oh no, we're falling. There we go. Back up, back up, back up. Swim away, little buddy. Boom. Okay. Oh, this guy's obviously too small for. So we're just going to turn the drag down, and we're going to play with this for a minute. Okay. Now, there is a high potential if you see the three little bars that I have, and I do have mine set to pro, so that I can see my line, my rod, and my reel. Now, I'm reeling just as fast as my guy can, but I'm not getting anywhere. Why? Well, because my drag's set too low. Bring the drag up, though, and we start bringing him in. Now, with the larger fish, they will suddenly rush the shore. So it's very important to keep that that lag or that slack, sorry, um, to keep that slack from getting down into these these lower blues. You really want to kind of keep it mid range and keep enough tension like that. See, and and if I lose this fish, it's not a big deal. I'm just I'm just doing this as as a description. Now, remember I said that we would talk about the eyes on your pole. If you can look at my fishing pole for a minute, and I kind of lay it out across the water so you can see the eyes on it, you'll notice how it's got a little bit of a bend to it in the direction of the fish. The more you get that bend, and no, I do not need to turn my, my drag up in order to catch this fish. You can utilize that bend to tire the fish out. So, an elemental six foot seven inch with low gear ratio can catch bigger fish. It just takes a lot more work. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and switch over. Maybe we'll get a good fight out of this. This is one of my favorite poles, um, not just because of how well it works but because when I want a good fight um V U M today. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, bud. Alright. Now, if you're playing this game without um, sound, you're going to have a much harder time. You can hear the click, 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 click of your drag. You can hear um, the tension of your line. There's a lot of things that you can... I turn the music down. There we go. Now, let me turn my drag down just a bit. There we go. Now, you see that bow? Now, I've turned my drag down. So, theoretically, I should not be able to catch these.
Okay, so it's just it's just spam. Got you. Thank you, Paladin Sass. I seem to get those every time I come on here now. It's really kind of ridiculous, and I wish I could take them off here, but, you know. Screw them. Whatever. They're on for a minute, and they give me a view, right? And realistically, I don't care about how many views I get for this. I'm not doing this for the publicity. There you go. See that bend? Now, because of the number of eyes I have on this pole, gives it a deeper bend, which is really wearing that poor fish out. I mean, he is just pulling for all he's worth. You kind of want to keep him in view. I'm hoping he rushes the shore so I can really kind of give a, a how-to. All right, here he comes. Now, see how I pulled up and I pulled away. Pulled away, pull up and away, up and away. Keep that, keep that, keep that. Don't let it go down. And there we go. He's back to pulling again. Now, you see what I did there? If you let that completely slack out, he will jump off your lure. That's all there is. That's how you lose these big fish is they will rush you. Trout are notorious for it. And some of the uh, the bigger bass later on, they, they're also really good at it, especially out like Louisiana, Florida, these places. They will suddenly rush at you and your gear ratio on your reel. Now, remember we talked about that one to five, one to four, okay? Unless you have the higher gear ratios, you cannot keep up with them. And in some cases, even those reels will not. Oh, there was a jump. So, of course, we're going to reel in. And mind you, I have not increased my reel speed. I just wore the fish out. Rainbow trout, 2.145 pound. Okay? This is an absolutely excellent catch. And I did that on... Let's pull it up here. Elemental 6 foot 7 inch, which has only got a 3 to 7 pound line maximum. And I'm running 8 pound. Yes, it's a little heavy for this one. And an 8.8 .8 pound max drag. Now, I have this pole basically maxed out for how much weight it can take. Um, and the reason for that is because, obviously, I'm level 41 on this character. I've had time to go back and go, ooh, look at what I have unlocked now. You don't have to do that to start with. Go ahead and throw six pound line on this. It'll work fantastically. Go ahead and throw a little bit lighter reel on this. It'll work fantastically, okay? Again, the level for this one, and we're going to go over here, spinning rods. Oh, <laughs> we actually have to go out in order to do that. So we're going to go ahead and go out again. I don't care about losing money. What's the worst that happens? I got to go to Lone Star and fish for an hour. Oh, no. Make enough money to come back here and then fish for three days straight in game. Make about 13,000 somewhere in there, probably more, considering that my fish fort. Yep, see, I don't have enough money to, to fix that. We had that same problem last time. So, uh, come on. I had a little bit of my money back. I've got enough money to, to get back out to Rocky again and go, go fix this. But um, we're going to go over to shop. <clears throat> Okay, so the Aurora, the Aurora eight foot two inch unlocks at level fourteen. The Elemental six foot seven inch unlocks at level four. That is the earliest that you can get a fantastic spin rod. You can go with the value spin. It's what they they basically give you to start with. It's only a twelve fifty. Don't buy that crap. It's garbage. Okay, it is a one six to five eighths ounce, and it's. Okay, I mean, if you really like it, go for it. Um, I prefer the extra three-inch length on this. I also prefer the uh, 0.5 pound. And uh, being able to go up to uh, one-third and all the way down to one-sixteenth, that's the real key right there, down to one-sixteenth, whereas you can only go to one-sixth ounce on the value spin. But one-sixteenth allows you all of those, those barbless little spinners that are in there that you unlock early. So your lures for this, let's see. Let see. <laughs> lures. Let's be easier with a mouse. Barbless spinner. Okay. 
These all unlock at level five. Now you're getting like one eighth ounce, one sixteenth. Okay, yes, these are bait coins. I'm aware you're gonna get achievements. They're gonna give you one to three bait coins a pop. Just fish with your your terminal tackle until level four, level five. You get enough money built up. Come in and just buy the lures that you need, one of each color in the 1 16th or 1 8th ounce. I highly recommend going 1 8th if you can, but realize that you're not going to catch the smaller fish as often. You're going to get fewer hits, bigger fish. Okay? It's a trade-off. The other thing that you're going to look at is you're going to look at the reel for that. And again, spin reels, not cast. We'll go into cast reels a whole nother episode way later. And that's that's a whole nother thing. Um, at level four, you're looking at the Inspire Cast 2000. At level five, you're looking at the Wind Cast 1500, which is the one I prefer. Okay, I wait till level five because not only is everything unlocked by then, but at that point, I can then go in and just buy everything because I have the money saved up. I've been in there in in the the Lone Star Lake just pulling pan fish out and leveling up it's real simple complete the missions that are early on um and if you have any questions on how to catch what you can either google it you can um hit me up in my messages here in comments if there's anything else that you guys want to see um need information on want to know how i do um why i do something crazy that you know you noticed in the videos please absolutely hit me up. I love talking to people um, and I, I absolutely have no problem answering questions. There isn't a stupid one unless you're like, how do I fish? Okay, that's a stupid question. You just do. <laughs> okay. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate you joining me and I hope that this helps out. Everybody have a fantastic day. Have a great week.